Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we continue our spring quarter of Sunday School lessons. The title of this quarter study is Examining Our Faith. In this quarter, we explore the fullness of faith as a response to God's desire to be in a relationship with us. To be faithless is to turn away from God, to put trust in something or someone other than God. The lessons for this quarter ask these questions. Is your faith steadfast? Are you contending for the faith? The lessons of this quarter guide the learners to a reaffirmation of their confidence in God, because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. This week, we continue our study in Unit 2, The Measure of Faith. There are four lessons in this unit drawn from the books of Luke and Matthew to discuss the range of Christian faith. In this week's lesson, Luke looks at the faith of a centurion who amazed Jesus with his faith, and Jesus acknowledged that he had not found such faith in all Israel. Get your Sunday school book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, April the 14th, is Healed from a Distance. And this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School commentary is The Faith of a Centurion. The background scripture is Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10, and the print passage is also Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. The key verse in this week's lesson is, That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. And that's Luke chapter 7, verse 7, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, what motivated the centurion to turn to Jesus? Question number two, why did Jesus say that the centurion demonstrated great faith? And question number three, what was Jesus's response to the centurion's request? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. This week's lesson is in the book of Luke. Luke was a Greek and Gentile Christian. He was a physician and Paul's companion for several years and is credited as the author of this gospel book and also the book of Acts. Luke is the only known Gentile biblical writer in the New Testament and his primary audience was Gentile. The book of Luke was written to Theophilus, who most likely was an early Christian who supported his work. The book is also written to Gentiles and people everywhere. Luke wrote meticulously based on eyewitness accounts affirming Jesus's divinity. Of the four gospels, this is the most comprehensive gospel written. Luke is the only account that provides a detailed report of Jesus's birth, John the Baptist's conception, and anything about Jesus's boyhood. Luke portrays Jesus as the compassionate Son of God. Luke provides a beautiful portrait of our compassionate Savior's ministry. Luke presents an accurate account of the life of Christ. A consistent theme in Luke's gospel is Christ's compassion for those often branded as outcasts, Gentiles, Samaritans, 
women, children, sinners, and tax collectors, and for the marginalized and social outcasts in Jewish culture, and those branded as sinners. Luke in his writing shows that Jesus was indeed human and divine with a special love and concern for humanity. Luke provides instances of those considered outcasts receiving Jesus' compassionate help for demonstrating faith in him and his ministry. One of these outcasts was a Roman centurion seeking healing for a beloved servant, as we will study in Luke chapter 7 in this week's lesson. Luke chapter 7 reveals the compassionate focus of Jesus' ministry. Luke chapter 7 contains several stories that illustrate Jesus' love and compassion. One story is the centurion who loved his servant, as recorded in Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. The lesson aims for this week are, number one, discover the factors that influenced the centurion's faith in Christ to heal the servant. Lesson aim number two, confess your need for God in the face of feeling helpless or hopeless. And lesson aim number three, engage in a pattern of fervent prayer amid helpless and hopeless circumstances. As we continue our glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book. The first lesson outline is Faith's Request, and that's Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. The second lesson outline is Faith Reward, and that's Luke chapter 7, verses 6 through 10. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, Faith's Request. Luke chapter 7 reveals the compassionate focus of Jesus' ministry. The main characters in this lesson are the Jewish elders, a Roman officer, and the officer's slave or servant. This lesson highlights faith in God and compassion for suffering people. Jesus had just finished a long teaching episode recorded in the previous chapter when he returned to Capernaum. After concluding a sermon outside town, Jesus returned to Capernaum and encountered a centurion. Verse 1 reads, and I'm reading from the New International Version. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. Capernaum was Jesus' home base, his city of residence. Verse 2, there a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. A centurion was a highly regarded Roman military officer who commanded or who was in charge of 100 soldiers. The centurion represented a Roman government ambivalent to Jesus and his ministry. Rome was a significant part of the opposition toward Jesus and his ministry. In his time of need, he turned to Jesus. He sent for Jesus. This Roman centurion, unlike many slave masters, had compassion for his servant. He loved this servant and would go to any trouble to save him. The attitude of this centurion to his slave was quite unusual. It was noted that he was a religious man and an humble man. Roman masters usually showed little regard for their servants' lives and their welfare, but this centurion showed open concern for a sick servant. This beloved servant was apparently facing death. Key point number one, the centurion believed that Jesus had the power to heal. He sent a request on behalf of his slave or his servant. He knew Jesus had the power to heal his slave. 
He had the confidence that says, Lord, I know you can do this. Verse three, the centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. Hearing that Jesus was in town, the centurion sent some Jewish elders to him, requesting that Jesus would come and heal his servant. He likely heard reports of Jesus' reputation as a healer. Whatever the centurion heard about Jesus was convincing enough for him to seek Jesus, to seek Jesus' help. In those days, dealing with a person's messengers was considered the same as dealing with the one who had sent them. In dealing with the messengers, Jesus was dealing with the officer. Someone may ask, why did the centurion send Jewish elders to Jesus instead of going himself? As an army captain, he daily delegated work and sent groups on missions. This is how he chose to get his message to Jesus. Key point number two, the centurion sends for Jesus. The centurion sent for Jesus because of what he had heard. His request suggests that he had a measure of faith in Jesus. The centurion soldier requested that Jesus heal his sick servant, who was near death. His association with the Jews and knowledge of Jesus' ministry were enough to impact his faith in Jesus. Verse 4, when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this. The Jewish elders explained to Jesus that this was a good man who was worthy to be helped. Verse 5, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. They explained that the centurion had demonstrated his love for the Jewish people in Capernaum and proved it by building them a synagogue. It is recorded that he loved the nation and built the synagogue, as just stated. The second outline, faith's reward. Key point number one, the centurion demonstrated faith and high regard for Jesus. Verse six reads, so Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. Jesus responded to the elders' request and went with them. But before arriving, the centurion sent friends to stop him from coming. The centurion knew that it might be a problem for this prominent rabbi to come into his home. So he had his friends meet Jesus on the way to say that it was not necessary for him to come all the way to the home. The biblical record states that before Jesus could even get to the centurion's house, another messenger met him on behalf of the soldier. Verse 7, that is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. The centurion felt unworthy that Jesus would come into his house. The centurion felt unworthy to approach Jesus himself. He said, say the word. He said to the Lord, and my servant will be healed. The elder said he was worthy. He said he was not worthy. They praised him for building a house of worship. He felt unworthy that Jesus would come to his house. They said he was deserving the elders. He felt himself undeserving. Apparently, the centurion did not think himself worthy of a personal meeting with Jesus and perhaps thought Jesus would not want to meet with a Gentile like himself. So he sent Jewish elders or leaders as his representatives to Jesus. He had never met Jesus but the man knew enough about him to regard Jesus with a high degree of respect. 
The centurion had full confidence in Jesus' ability. He knew Jesus had true authority and could command things to be done and see them complete outside his immediate presence. The centurion indicated that he did not count himself worthy of being in Jesus' presence, neither did he think it necessary for him to be present to heal his servant. The centurion did not ask Jesus to enter his home, but to simply speak the word and let my servant be healed. Key point number two, the centurion had full confidence in Jesus' ability to heal his servant. Unlike others seeking Jesus' help, this Gentile military officer expressed faith that Jesus could work a healing miracle from afar. Verse 8 reads, For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 9, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Jesus marveled at the man's faith. True faith gets God's attention. Verse 10, then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Jesus still responds to those who approach him with humility and faith, trusting his power to respond to them with compassion and divine power. For Jesus to perform this miracle also emphasizes God's commitment to extend his grace and mercy to all people, not just a few. In summary, this lesson focused on the faith of a centurion who believed that Jesus could heal someone from a distance. It is essential not to forget how he approached Jesus for help. It was with faith, humility, and concern for another person. When we turn to Jesus in faith to help us with our own problems, we should also strive to approach him with a humble heart. God's compassion is unchanging. This story of the centurion's faith is yet another example of Jesus' willingness and ability to do great and mighty things for those who turn to him in faith. The healing miracle in this lesson happened only when the centurion approached Jesus for help in a spirit of humility and concern for another. Every answered prayer is more evidence that our omnipresent Lord can help and heal and deliver from a distance. This lesson challenges believers to back up whatever they claim to believe about God with genuine acts of faith by demonstrating great faith. This level of faith is possible only to those who are becoming more like Christ through the practice of spiritual disciplines. Our closing thought and question. We are to demonstrate compassion and concern for others who are struggling with life's circumstances or life's uncertainties. Question. How far are you willing to go to show compassion for others? In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to study and teach God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.